What is up, everybody? This is Chris, and welcome to Lost in Comics, where we help you get lost on your comic journey. Welcome to the weekly top three comics to read this new comic week. This is the video where I read my stack of comics, and I tell you which three comics were my favorite reads of the week. I'm also going to tell you about other books that I enjoyed this week. I will rank my top three on a five jabroni scale, with five being the very best. Now, this was a very good week of comics. Comics. Let's talk about it and get this show started with Three. Superman issue number five from DC Comics. We've got Joshua Williamson on writing, art and colors by Jamal Campbell, and letters by Ariana Mayer. When I look for words to describe this issue and also this run so far, I'll say rich in characterization. Each issue just seems to really build onto what we know about not only Superman, but also Lex, Lois, Jimmy, the new players. Uh, in this issue, Jimmy Olsen falls in love with the Silver Banshee, and you can see that natural flow in their relationship. There's that give and take, and you see the influence that they have on one another, which ultimately leads to the Silver Banshee choosing good over evil. As these issues have gone forward, we've also seen this dynamic being formed between Luther and Superman that also makes you hopeful that maybe Lex is finally turning a corner. Maybe he's changing his ways, but it's happening organically to the degree where there's still this tension and untrust between the characters, which is totally to be expected from these characters, right? But the ever hopeful Superman, he wants to have hope for Lex. And then there's this beautiful display of Clark and Lois's relationship toward the end of the issue. But I wasn't quite prepared for what happened to Lex at the very end. No spoilers, I am not going to tell you what, what happened, but it's something big. Um, but it's crazy what good writing and character development can do for characters that have existed for so long. Uh, like I said at the top, this book is rich in characterization. I hate that this story won't resume until August, because Night Terrors is about to take over DC. <sighs> Oh well, uh, it's worth the wait. It'll be worth the wait. I will. I cannot wait to see what happens in the month of August with this book. Now let's give this issue a. You know, I absolutely love that book. Four. A four point one to start off this week's top three, which takes us to two. The Bone Orchard Mythos Tenement, issue number one from Jeff Lemire, Andrea Sorrentino on art, Dave Stewart on colors, and Steve Wands on letters. I have been enjoying the Bone Orchard Mythos, although none of the previous issues have made my top three until today. This was the best opener and single issue in the Bone Orchard Mythos so far. Remember, Lemire and Sorrentino are creating this shared horror universe under the Bone Orchard Mythos umbrella. Some stories are one-shot graphic novels, others are single issue runs like this one, but Sorrentino said they have enough story for a hundred issues if need be, and if they continue to be this good, I am there for all of it. I remember on our interview with Jeff Lemire a couple of months ago, he did speak a little bit in regards to this shared universe. Be sure you check out that interview right here up at the link wherever side that goes. Right there on YouTube. Uh, but in this story, seven people all connected to the tenement that they live in. They have no idea of their connection to each other. Not yet. And nor do we know yet. But the pieces have been laid out for us. The Bone Orchard mythos is like this 5,000 piece puzzle. And with each story, we get more pieces to that puzzle. There's this subtle mystery when one of the seven characters is taken by ambulance, but leaves this mysterious key to a young boy in the tenement. What is the key all about? Who was the old man that went in the ambulance? His name is Felix. Who is he? Why does the boy seem so creepy? All questions that I cannot wait to find answers for. I love when Lemire opens strong like this. We have a lot to look forward to. I really like what Sorrentino is doing on this book also. It's just a tad brighter with less dark shadowing than what we are used to, and that really helps give us a good sense of the tone of this book. And this one is getting a... You know, I absolutely love that book. Four. A 4.20. A 4.2. 
Help your boy out, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, I'd like to personally welcome you to Lost in Comics. We are a comic-loving YouTube channel. We love the stories, we love the characters and the creators that build the worlds that we get lost in every single time we pick up a comic book. Be sure to turn those bells on so that you don't miss any content that we release here on the channel. Quick reminder, next Thursday, June 29th, it is our end of the month live show. We'll be talking all things Heroes Con 2023. David and I, the pouch, went and attended Heroes Con 2023. Was it any good? What was our experience? We're going to break that all down for you. And we're also going to talk about the Flash movie, which he and I are going to go watch this weekend. So I cannot wait to share our thoughts with you, break all that down, get your thoughts, and have you tell us what you thought of all of that in the chat. Come hang out with us that night. Do not miss it. Now hold on tight. It is time for the... It's the pick of the week. The pick of the week. Pick of the week. And this week's pick of the week is... The Incredible Hulk, issue number one, from Philip Kennedy Johnson, of course, Marvel Comics. We've got Nick Klein on art, Matthew Wilson on colors, and VC's Corey Petit on letters. This book is just a freaking treat, y'all. Look, for those of us who muddled through the last Hulk run, you were just a little scarred from that experience. And it was so incredibly different than the Al Ewing run. And while I think while Kate's had good intentions, so many factors derailed that comic. But now, the Hulk is back, baby. If this doesn't get you excited, then you're on the wrong side of the green door. This first issue has that sense of horror that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby addressed from the very beginning of this character. That question that they asked, is he man or monster, or is he both? And that is the basis for this story. And it's much more in the tone of the Al Ewing run while presenting a fresh take from these creators. That classic internal battle between Bruce Banner and the Hulk is present and it's turned up several notches. Everywhere that Bruce goes, he's haunted by the Hulk who will not leave him alone no matter how hard Bruce tries. And Hulk is not just some small voice in Bruce's head. No, he's a monster with a desire to come out and he will do anything to be released. And Hulk is ready to hunt all the terrors of this world. He just needs to be set loose on them. I was such a fan of what Nick Klein did on the Kate's Thor run. It was a shining moment for him, and he's bringing it with this new series. Dynamic, bombastic, eerie at times. Nick Klein is the real deal, and he's about to show us all something very special. Is Hulk Manor Monster? I'm gonna say monster. I loved this first issue and I am not surprised one bit with Philip Kennedy Johnson at the helm. This is, without a doubt, the pick of the week and it is getting a... You know, huh? I absolutely love that book. Four. A 4.6. I loved this intro to the new Incredible Hulk run. I'm ready for issue number two. Now, let's go to some runner-ups this week. We've got Terror War issue number three from Saladin Ahmed on writing, Dave Acosta on art, inks by Jay Listine, colors by Walter Pereira, and letters by Sean Lee. There are some real curses that come along with being the best at what you do. That's what Mohammed Cho is facing when the wealthiest members of Blue City send their best security personnel to detain Cho and his team of terror fighters. Because Cho is the best at what he does. Cho is presented with a suicide mission to fight an evolving group of terrors that have ruined the last remaining paradise city or have everything stripped away from him by the richest of Blue City. Not much of a choice, it seems, but isn't that pretty much the standard when you're dealing with the rich and famous? Just a reminder, terrors are people's worst fears manifested into real life in this comic, and these terrors seem to be getting smarter by the day. Dave Acosta has built this beautiful world of blue cityscape, and those gorgeous blue tones make you swear you are living in this comic. Next up, Batman, White Knight Presents, Generation Joker, issue number two from DC, Katana Collins and Clay McCormick, and Sean Murphy all on writing, Mirko Andalfa on art, Alejandro Sanchez on colors. 
If you followed along the Batman White Knight Presents books, then you know that Jack Napier is the best version of Joker, and for now he lives on in this story as a sort of AI version of himself. But he won't be around for much longer, and before he goes, he wants to show his daughter how much he really loves her. I remember when the first Batman White Knight book came out and how annoyed I was that Jack Napier was being presented as this sympathetic character. I thought, no way, that's the Joker. I will never forgive him for all the things that he's done. Fast forward throughout the series, you really do begin to have sympathy on this version of the Joker, the man behind it all. And remember, it's an Elseworld story, so anything can happen. This book is very, very good. Now, some shout outs to get to Titans, issue number two from DC Comics, Tom Taylor on writing, Nicola Scott on art. The Titans are gelling as a team, sacrificing for one another for the good of humankind as they are replacing the Justice League. I love how the core of this book, it's just a classic team comic book. Very nice references to some Teen Titans history and this team knows they have big shoes to fill and a lot to live up to with the absence of the Justice League. Can they do it or will they fail? I am enjoying this so far. Uh, not the best and greatest of all comics, but I am enjoying the run. It is solid. Next up, Chicken Devils, issue number four from Aftershock. We've got Brian Buccioletto on writing and Mattia Monaco on art and colors. This is a little gem over at Aftershock Comics that's in the vein of Breaking Bad if you were a fan of that TV series. This book has suffered with the delayed releases over at Aftershock with all their troubles um, with their bankruptcy last year. But when it's all said and done, I recommend that you give this a shot. This is the second volume of the Chicken Devil series. If you like a little bit of humor with your Breaking Bad, check this comic out. It's really fun. And lastly, uh, please check out All Eight Eyes from Dark Horse. It's a monster spider story with a lot to say about loss and humanity. I have really enjoyed that series. Now, just a few notes on some other comics that came out this week. Nightwing, issue number 105 from DC Comics. This was a comic that was hyped up because of the point of view perspective um, from Nightwing as he goes throughout the comic. Um, this issue was decent enough. I enjoyed it. Not top three worthy, but it did get the book moving along. But if you're like me and you like to collect cool cameos in comics, there is a couple of pages in this comic where our favorite office characters appear. That's right, uh, Dwight Schrute with blonde hair makes an appearance, Stanley, uh, Karen, you got Sarah, Jim, Michael, they're, they're all there. And that is pretty freaking cool. So if you are a fan of The Office, highly recommend you pick up this comic if you're not already getting Nightwing. And lastly, Wonder Woman number 800. I wanted to love this issue. I wanted to love the prelude to Tom King's new Wonder Woman series. But I did not. It, it was decent, but nothing that made me excited for the new Tom King run. And you guys know how much of a fan of Tom King that I am. And that definitely makes me a little sad. We'll see. We'll definitely be checking out the new Wonder Woman series. But re after reading this, I, I am not all that hopeful. But again, I will give it a shot and we will see. What are you reading what did you think of the new Hulk run? I thought it was fantastic. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for hanging out with me for the top three. And as always, stay lost in comics. I will see you soon.